You fight like a dairy farmer. How appropriate, you fight like a cow. Hello there, Stefan and Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam today to talk about provocations in sword fighting. And actually, this applies to any sword fighting and probably again to all martial arts again as well, because it's provoking an action from your opponent. Why? Why do we want to provoke actions from our opponent? Well, we want to take the control of the fight, but taking control doesn't have to mean that you're the only one acting, that you're the only one attacking. Controlling a fight can also be provoking a predictable action from your opponent to then use that action against them to hit them without getting hit. And the Bolognese sources speak over and over that, for example, Giovanni Della Rocchia says it's dangerous to attack an, uh, an opponent with intent who just stands waiting and ready, still in a guard. Because if they know how to sword fight, they probably also now know how to counter your every attack you can throw at them. Because there is no attack who ha that has no counter. Okay, so the art of sword fighting is actually creating these tempi, these opportunities to safely attack your opponent. And basically, there are, let's say, three basic provocations you can do. The first one is an invitation. And an invitation can just be exposing yourself. So for example, Morozzo says to expose your leg or you expose your head and then give your opponent an opportunity, or so it seems at least, an opportunity that seems too good to not take it. To then, for example, parry and repost, or even better, parry and repost in the same time. Okay, so this is the first one, an invitation. You want to provoke an attack of your opponent because if they move, they focus yourself, uh, they focus on themselves on that movement so they don't have all the different alternatives, all the different options to move anymore. Because if you're already moving, you need time and energy to stop your sword and redirect it, for example. Okay. The second one is the feint. And probably the feint is one of the typical provocations that is used and usually it should draw a defense. So for example, if I attack Stefan with a mandrito, he will parry it because he doesn't want to get hit. So if I feint this, he opens himself up in that tempo for another attack. If you feint and the opponent actually parries, you don't want to make the contact to the parry at all. Okay, so if I give Stefan this sensual feeling that the parry was made, he's already recognizing, okay, I parried, now it's probably the time for me to attack because I'm kind of out of position and then this is a whole different game. So you don't want to give them that feeling sensation, okay? You want them to draw their parry a bit wider than they need to because they don't meet your sword, oh, it isn't there and then it should be too light for them to parry on the other side. Okay, but that look on the feint is a bit shallow. Why? Because, well, we don't only have the option for countering an attack with a parry repost, but we also have the option to counter an attack with an appropriate counter attack. Okay, so it might be the case that I throw my mandrito and Stefan doesn't parry at all, but he goes for these counter-tempo actions. So actually, your feint now draws a movement, an action, but it's not a parry. And if you think it's a parry and you want to go around, well, you're already hit. And that's actually a thing about feints, because it's a movement, it's a tempo, and it's actually a tempo, if you withdraw it, that doesn't that doesn't threaten your opponent. 
Okay, it's a movement that doesn't threaten your opponent. So if, if Stefan even wouldn't uh, cover himself and just attack myself, but, and I'm on my, in my action to pull this again back to go around, I'm already hit before I'm even in the motion to do my real attack. Okay, so the direct attack usually is seen as a counter to a feint. So, your feint can also draw attacks and you should be aware of this. So, maybe you can use your feints more precisely, especially against opponents who tend to go for these counter tempo actions, to draw the attack of your opponent to then go directly from the feint into the parry Okay, you see they're moving, you have time to react, you're recognizing they're moving their blade forward and from here you then go for your true attack or maybe you can again go for a contra tempo action. That's still possible, okay? But don't think about a feint as just drawing out a defense. It probably, and for Hema this is especially true, because we don't fear to get hit that much because we have all that protective equipment, you probably will draw with your feint a lot of counter attacks. Okay. The third provocation I want to talk about is the attack. But it's not necessarily a direct attack that is fully committed, but it's more like getting yourself in a better position. So for example, let's say Stefan uh, is in a point forward guard. I could also seek just an advantage of position by placing my blade over here. I don't need the, the blade bind, but you could use this. But again, I usually don't want to give my opponent any sensation of feeling. And from here, this is also a provocation because now I'm really close to hitting Stefan without him being anywhere close to hitting me. So there's a really strong incentive for him to now defend. Okay, and this is the motion you're waiting for. So I'm here and then you go around and try again to attack in a way that covers yourself for a counter attack after or if he goes for the mandrito. Okay, so just moving towards your opponent. Um, in Manchelino it's called stringere. Just getting closer in an advantage, in an advantageous position will compel your opponent to move. For example, here to push your sword over and in the Anonimo you will then see the disengaged, the Esfalzare or in later manuals would be the Cavaccione for example. So this is a kind of attack which is more like getting yourself in a better position and if they don't attack you just stab them. Okay. You're countering their position and if they move you react accordingly. Okay, so these are three principles. Okay, you can invite them, you can feint, which can draw out a defense or an attack depending a bit on your opponent and then you can move into an advantageous position to attack them. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed this little primer on provocations in the next few videos, we will look at distinct examples of the Bologna sources, especially Giovanni della Gocchia. Until then, train safe, train hard, and we'll see you next time. Ciao! Ich mag die Folge jetzt schon. Ich mag, mag, na, ich mag dieses Thema.